Welcome back, The Network Berg here. In this video, we'll be going over quality of service or QoS on a Microtik device. We'll be looking at simple queues, how to set up the queue schedule, as well as bursting. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's discuss QoS. But before I show you how to set this up in any fashion, I just first want to get around the theory of QoS. And that is it gives us a means of controlling how bandwidth is flowing through the network. So we can essentially rate limit specific services or IPs or interfaces just to make sure it only does that amount of bandwidth that we allocate to it so that we don't overcap services. Because it might happen that you have a 10 meg link and you wanna even out how services go over the link to give the best experience to your users or to your house, however you want it. Because if everybody gets that full 10 meg Pi the whole time, then everybody might have a slow internet browsing experience. QoS is starting to become less, I don't want to say relevant, because these days in a lot of the, the major countries and cities, people get like one gig internet links to their houses. So it's very rare for those type of uh, links to be saturated with traffic, but it, it can happen. And uh, QoS does help us just fix those things. And it's very useful in an ISP environment, obviously, so that you can also just effectively queue services to make sure that people get the best experience. So let's get into how we set up QoS and that we can do through the queues menu on the Microtik. And then from the queues, we need to just hit the plus. And this is just for the simple queue now. We will look at the queue trees and queue types in another video, but for now we'll just add a simple queue. We can add a name, so this is good to be descriptive. It doesn't do anything with the QS, it's just for us to understand what it's for. So I might say this is for user one uh, internet. Let's say it's user one internet. And user one, I'm going to use my own PC as an example, and I just want to find its IP address quickly. So let's do an IP config. And 192.168.0.254 is my PC's IP. So the target is what you basically bind the rules against. So this could be an IP of a computer. It could be an entire IP range, a subnet, a network. It could be an interface. So if you click on this little drop down, you can actually select an interface. Um, and that's about it. But let's do this against an IP address so that I can show you what's happening. So the target is 192.168.0.254. And my destination I can leave this as the internet, so 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. But if you wanted to specify a specific destination that the target is connecting to, maybe let's say Facebook's or Meta, I think <laughs> that's what Mark Zuckerberg wants to call it these days. Uh, you could put their prefix in there or their subnet, and then that is how you could essentially rate limit stuff to that specific destination. But let's do this as a catch all for the whole internet. And before I apply anything, because this is the basics of it, um, there, there's one more thing that we need to do is specify target upload and target download. And this is how you rate limit it. But before I do that, let's just quickly see what speeds I'm getting. So if I go to www.speedtest.net and I click on go, let's go, let's go quickly. And we see how fast the internet is. Uh, we can see I've got actually a good amount of latency. Download speed is pretty good, so this is pretty decent. I've personally got a 200 megabit fiber line, but this is a 951 uh, U that I'm connecting with, and all of these ports are 100 megabit. So this is actually expected, so this looks good. Um, and again, th this can work in conjunction with uh, Torch. So if we Torch our interface and we're trying to find a bandwidth hog, we can see this person is using the most bandwidth, we can actually grab their source IP and apply the queue against them just to make sure that we could rate limit the amount of bandwidth that they use. All right, let's get back to our queue. So we can see the queue, it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't applied or changed anything yet, but let's say the limit, let's set it for 10 meg. Let's apply this. And that's, that's it, that's as easy as it should be. So let's do another speed test, but I actually know that we're still gonna get 100 megabits and this might actually confuse some people uh, whenever they're uh, setting up QoS and they use stuff like fast track. And I'm going to explain this now. So we're going to do another speed test. And wow, I'm still getting that 100 megabits, even though I've got um, a queue configured. It's there. If we go back to my queues, it's there. I've got 10 megabits, but it's not doing anything. And the reason for that is in a previous lecture, I actually set up fast track on the firewall. And fast track essentially bypasses all the firewall rules and QoS needs the firewall to function. So it's very important for you to understand if you want to implement stuff like QoS or NAT or whatnot, 
that traffic can't be fast tracked. It can't be fast forwarded. So let me just disable my fast track rules quickly. Uh, it should just be that actually. And with that disabled, oh, there we go. <laughs> if I go back, you actually see there's this icon here that turned red and now it's going yellow. And that's also relevant because that icon will change color depending on what's happening with the queue. So if the queue is not actively being hit or used, then it will be green. So that's like zero to 50 ish percent. Then from let's say 50 or 51 up until 75 ish, then it will go yellow and above that it will start hitting red. And that just means if it's yellow, keep an eye on it because then you know it's kind of being used. And if it's hitting red, that means the services are actively being used that you're trying to queue. So those people are definitely hitting a cap and they might experience slow speeds or they won't see more speeds than what you've defined in the queue. But let's do that test again. So let's see, now that I've disabled fast track, am I rate limited to 10 megs? So let's just go back here. There we go. So that's what I expect. So now we can see the queue is actually taking effect. We can see the icon changing color and we know this is actually working. So that is awesome. So that is how we can add a very basic and simple queue to rate limit somebody. Uh, let me just close that and then we'll quickly look at setting up a schedule. All right, so let's look at how we can implement a schedule on a queue. So we can double click on a queue that we've created and then we can click on this drop down for time. And in time, you can specify the exact time that you want the queues to take effect. So you can set a certain time, a window, a time window, and you can also specify on which days it should be. So if you click on all of this, it will be for all of the days. If you leave that blank, then it will only operate within that time period. And if you only click on like Monday, then it will only take effect on a Monday. Uh, and again, this should be why your SNTP client is running or that you make sure that you've got the clock settings set correct. Because if it's incorrect, then people's queues might just not work the way that you want. Maybe the router thinks it's 10 p.m. and everybody gets full bandwidth, but it's actually 8 a.m. in the morning and everybody's just starting their day. All right, but let's implement a queue. So I'll say this will work any time from 17, let's say 17.30 up until 2200 on all days. Let's apply that. And if I go back, we actually see the rule has turned red and it actually said something like invalid there. And the reason that's happening is because we are outside of that time window at the moment. So it's not that you configured anything incorrectly. It's just the time hasn't come yet. So the the rule is just inactive. So the moment it actually hits 1730, then we should see this take effect. So let's just maybe uh, scooch this along a little bit. So let me just set the clock quickly. So let's go into our system clock. And let me just make this like 29.55. Um, Let's apply that and let's see what happens when we hit that 17.30 with this rule. So this should actually now go uh, and become a different color. I might just have to refresh the screen or it might take a few seconds. There we go. So I didn't change anything. It's, it's just active now. So that's kind of how the schedule works. So there you can specify which time windows you want the queues to take effect. All right, so let's jump into bursting quickly because bursting, it shouldn't be a complex subject. It's just, there is a little bit of math involved in it. So that tends to hurt people's brains a little bit. But the concept of bursting is whenever you've got bursting configured, it allows the queue, so the policer, to go over its limit for a specific period of time. So this is very useful for if you want to maybe showcase people, hey, this is a 200 megabit link. Um, we've got a burst limit set up so you can hit that limit whenever you do like a speed test but uh, we don't want it to be indefinite you know so it doesn't consume bandwidth the whole time so uh, the burst limit is very effective with that and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open up microtix documentation for the burst limit so let's go microtix burst and i'm just going to go in there just to show you the formula that they use because it can be a bit confusing um, I just want to go back to the rules as well because you see there's the burst and you get a few options there. You've got burst limit, burst threshold and burst time. So the time, this is usually what confuses people the most. This is not how long the burst will happen. This is basically just part of the equation to figure out like when or for how long the actual burst will be. So if I go back to that documentation and let's just increase that. 
we can see the like here is the math happening but here is what i want you to see and i'll put this in the description or in a comment but the actual the longest burst time so that's the actual time is actually equal to the burst threshold times the burst time divided by the burst limit so that that sounds crazy but that's how long the time will be and here is the formula the math behind it so i'm not going to um try and explain all of it you just need to understand there's a bit of a formula involved in how long the burst will last but besides looking at the formula let's actually implement it so you could see i had a 10 megabit limit on this computer and let's maybe say we want to burst for more we want to burst to 100 megabits per second so we want 100 megabits so that is how much we can burst to now let's set the threshold so the threshold is effectively when do we want to start bursting do we want to start bursting immediately or do we want to start bursting at a specific limit so i might say i want to start bursting at 10 megabits because that's what my normal max limit is so the moment i hit my normal max limit i want to start bursting i want to <laughs> i want to go up to 100 megabits and now i've got my burst time which i can set so let's maybe set this for 20 and then i'm going to apply this and now that that's been applied i'm going to go back onto a speed test and let's just see what the outcome is so if i do a go and i click on go we'll see the burst actually take effect so it might go boom, quickly jumps up to that 100 megabits and then it gradually starts going down because the burst limit has like done its thing it's done its calculation it's allowed the user to burst and this is like the outcome of that so you can see it definitely um, gives a nicer view of what the link can do and let's just stop that and then i'm going to do another thing i'm just going to increase the time so let's change it from 20 to 30 and then you'll see the burst actually lasts longer now obviously but it's it's not like 20 seconds um it's just part of that equation that's happening so if i do a another speed test now you'll see it stays at 100 megabits for longer and then it will slow like a, a, a lot slower go down towards the normal limit which would be 10 megabits all right so that covers burst let's just do one more cool thing that i actually think people should be aware of and that is the mangle rules that we can incorporate with our cues <laughs> look at me i just fell out of the sky with a different shirt and my glasses on sorry i i'm actually continuing this lecture that i recorded yesterday but i'm going to finish it up now just quickly going over some of the additional advanced features that we can do with the cues especially with the simple cues so if i go into a queue and i click on the advanced tab there's extra features that we can see here we've got the packet marks which is where we can basically add mangle rules to the queue so that it will take effect so that whatever you've marked with a mangle you can also rate limit that and there's also stuff like uh, there's additional limit at here but this you could just think of the same as your normal max limit here you just can set your target upload and download limits here and then quite importantly there's a priority list here as well so the priority if you come from a cisco qos world you might be familiar with priorities Microtech has the same thing but their priority list goes from eight to one eight being the lowest so that is stuff that you would classify as best effort so just normal internet browsing and whatnot and then one would be your highest priority, which you could associate with a platinum service almost. So let's say if you were running voice services over the link, you might want to give voice priority one where you'd give your browsing priority eight or something. So that, that is where this comes in. All right. So let's quickly look at implementing some mangle rules with our queue. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add two firewall rules. I'm going to go into my IP firewall. And then in my mangle, there's two things I can do. I can add a pre-routing. So anything before it gets routed for TCP, and I'm going to set the destination port as 80443 with a comma and then 8080. So those are pretty default browsing ports that you might see. So what we're going to do is anything before it gets routed for these browsing ports, we're going to mark the packet. And then we can mark this with browsing. So I'm going to apply that. And then in essence, what this will do is any TCP connection, any browsing connection will get marked. And what we could do is with the queue, if I go back into the advanced section and I click on this drop down, I can actually select browsing so that all browsing traffic from my network to the internet will effectively get rate limited at 10 megabits. So 
there's only 10 megabits that can be used for those protocols. I might also want to do something if I run a speed test just to slow the traffic down to a specific host. So what I could do is I can also click on this drop down and let's, let's call this incoming um, dash host one. And I'm going to apply this here and let's add another firewall rule. And this will also just be a mangle, but I'm going to, instead of say pre routing when you say any traffic that's getting forwarded, to my 192.168.0.254 address, which is my computer's address. I'm also just going to mark that connection or mark the packet, apologies. And I can select incoming host one there as well. So if I apply that, now I've got two mangle rules, which will effectively mark traffic to my computer. One of it's for traffic that's going to my computer, and the other is for traffic that's being generated from my computer going out. So what I could in essence do is perhaps run another speed test. So let's just go to speedtest.net and I'll click on the go button. And then we can see what the impact is on that. So I probably should see I'm being rate limited at 10 megabits for my incoming connection because of the one mangle rule I have for incoming traffic that's going to me. It's being forwarded to me. And as soon as the uploads start, that should also get rate limited to 10 megabits because of the other rule that we've got uh, for traffic that's being generated out from me to the internet. All right, so this is how we can go about setting up rate limits using Mangle rules. And it's really quite interesting because you can do a lot with Mangle. You can even like play with the layer seven protocols and mangles, but I'll make a completely separate video for that. It has nothing to do with the MTCNA. Uh, even this that we just discussed isn't really for the MTCNA, but it is something interesting to know that you can see that you can set up and maybe you can try it for yourself. All right, so I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in another video. See ya, bye-bye.